YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back after crazy week 16. Here to give you my takeaways. We'll make this quick. Just summarize each game. Give me my takeaways for the teams moving forward, whether it's the playoffs next year. Um, yeah, a lot of interesting games, a lot of surprises. Uh, a week to remember for the officials. The officials had a hell of a week, let me tell you. Uh, if you don't follow us on Twitter, you're missing out. Constant NFL talk, takeaways during live games, everything. Follow that Twitter. You're missing out if you're not following it. If you don't have a Twitter, make one. Be much appreciated. Link down below if you need it. Uh, we have a podcast, Patreon, and uh, Instagram as well. You'll find links down below. Please subscribe if you're new. Full NFL coverage picks every single week. Uh, we're ready for the playoffs. we got full coverage there. I like the playoff videos that we have every single year. So we have the kind of the same thing, all kinds of predictions and more. Uh, so join us for that. Subscribe, turn notifications on. Check out that side of the app. You'll find a link in the description and comments for that. As well as our Patreon, uh, a lot of extra content that will continue into the playoffs uh, with uh, bets of the week for NFL College Football. We have our bowl game bets on there right now. Uh, you know, hit already hit on the Liberty Coastal Carolina uh, over. That was a freebie. Come on now. And then, we, yeah, a lot going on there. A lot of you showing your support. Appreciate you very much. The Christmas game. Do I have to? Yeah, I do have to. Um, and so for some reason, I'm wearing a Vikings hat. We got it backwards, so I don't have to embarrass myself with the logo. But I told you I'm wearing it, so it's already ruined. But uh, the Saints, 52 points. Alvin Kamara ties the rushing touchdown record. He could have beat it, but Sean Payton, I'm okay with it, though. You know, it's kind of just Sean Payton making a point that this isn't about records. You know, it's Sean Payton. I kind of like that, you know. At the same time, the guy could have got the record. The guy could have got, probably would have, could have beat Adrian Peterson's single-game rushing record as well against that Vikings defense because Kamara's that good and that defense is that bad. Um, but, yeah, the Saints just kept rolling on offense. Drew Brees did have a couple, uh, or one interception was tipped around. He was fortunate for another. Uh, he didn't have another one. But the first interception was somewhat bad, but, you know, he's – Second game back, getting going. I mean, 52 points, getting ready for the playoffs is is ridiculous. You know, I know the Vikings team defense was in full strength, but a Zimmer defense uh, is something that the Saints kind of always, I don't want to say struggled with, but, yeah, pretty close to that. So and then to kind of go from that extreme to this, you know, 52 points is a pretty good sign heading into the playoffs. I don't really care who's on the field. It's 52 damn points, you know, uh, without Michael Thomas as well. But the running game was great. Honestly, they probably could have ran the ball every single play and done just as well. Um, you know, so that, that's a big time game there. Um, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I think their defense, their defense could have played a little better. But the Vikings' offense has been has been getting going. It's a pretty good. That's that's weird for the Vikings. You know, the offense is probably is it's probably better than it's been in some time. But they're they they they're not good. And I, I you know I suppose it's the start the way they started this year, but their defense, the way it is down the stretch of the year. So it's unfortunate. You never Vikings, it seems like, can never have, uh, you know, the offense and the defense on the same page. So they get their defense healthier, better next year. Let's see if uh, let's see if the offense is still clicking the way it is now. You know, Justin Jefferson, the Saints respected him. They doubled him up. Still had a pretty solid game. You get the chance to break that rookie receiving yards record next week. Uh, that that'll be that that'll be that'll be great. That'll be good. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm pushing for. I don't care if they win or lose. I want the Justin Jefferson record there. Uh, Cousins looked pretty solid. Cook looked good. They just he, they just couldn't. They had to they, they had to play keep up. They had to play keep up there. So defense lost the game. Uh, it's a good sign for the Saints offense. Their defense doesn't feel as good as it was a few weeks ago. But the Vikings offense is probably better than most would think. So can't take away too much from that. Um, yeah, Saints are in playoff mode, offensively at least. Uh, the Buccaneers, they're heating up. They're in playoff mode. 47-7, to big win over the Lions, so the Saints make that statement. The Bucs make a statement, not quite 52 points, pretty close, but then they held their opponent to 7. I know the Lions aren't the best team right now. Stafford did get hurt. But something with the Falcons game. You know, first half, they looked pretty bad. They couldn't really do anything on either side of the ball. Uh, then all of a sudden, the second half, something clicked, something happened. I kind of talked about did they gain momentum? Is that the boost that they needed? Will they start to you know get going? Because we kind of figured the Buccaneers would do that at some point. We kind of questioned it because we kind of kept feeling that even before the Falcons game. Is this it? Is this it? You know. And then looking at the second half of that Falcons game, looking at a game like this, um, it's kind of looking like that. I know it's the Lions. It's the Lions, but Brady was making some throws that I, I you know, he hits no matter what the defense. You know, it's just kind of one of those games for Tom Brady. It doesn't really matter how good the defense is. This was a bad defense, but. Um, yeah, no Ronald Jones. Well, Mike Evans had a big time game. I thought Godwin played well. Antonio Brown's getting going. Gronk's getting going. You know, so it all looks good there. 
Uh, and the defense makes plays. We know and we know it's a good defense. I guess consistency is the issue. The defense is always pretty solid, and they kind of have those moments, you know, beginning of the Falcons game. It's more of the offense being consistent. Sometimes they just get shut down. How will they be against the, the, the contenders in the NFC that have the defenses to stop them, you know? How will they be there? It looks like, you know, Brady and company are in playoff mode. They're getting going. Lions, I talked about this on Twitter. I mean, I talked about this at the time they've drafted these guys over the last few years, but they've built this defense uh, with overdrafted players that specifically fit Matt Patricia's scheme. And I called them, it's not me just saying it now, I called them out at the time of all those picks over the years. Um, and you can't overdraft players just based on fit. You take the best players. And if you think a guy's just never going to work, he's no shy, he's going to work, he's just not in our scheme, there's no way. And they don't really have a specific scheme. They kind of have a hybrid scheme. So they're they're taking like guys that are just so specifically fitting that scheme, and they overdraft them. So that being said, um, you know it was crazy, and we've said this before that <clears throat> that Quinn uh, and Patricia lasted as long as they did. You know it kind of ruined the def- It kind of ruined the team there. The next guy is going to have to dig them out of uh, quite of a mess there. So that's something that it kind of stands out in a game like this. But it's, it stood out even years ago. Um, you know, they missed out on some good players. They drafted guys that should specifically fit, and they didn't really fit that well because they just weren't as good as players as, the, as you know some other guys. So that's something that stands out there for the Lions. Yeah, they got some digging to do, um, you know, this offseason going forward. The Bucks, they're heating up. Uh, Niners-Cardinals was the second Saturday game. Uh, was a strangely, uh, oddly, uh, you know, uh, Amazon Prime-only game, but I did get to see that. Uh, see the game. Cardinals choked it. You know they're they're in prime. They they controlled their own destiny for for the playoffs, and they blew that. Now they need some help. They're they're still in a decent shot to make it, but uh, they're not playing good football really right now. So ever since the hail mary, uh, they went downhill and they kind of bounced out of it a little bit. But then, you know, now it's kind of looking like not really. You know, um, it's just a, you know how you only score twelve points in this game is ridiculous. Kingsbury is to blame a lot this year. I blamed him for his play calling a lot this year. I, I blamed him for his timeout management, clock management, management, game management, all of it. He's been the system is there. It's a great system. Um, you know, I think what they do, you can't really tell for sure. I think that what they do with the game plan for the most part, you know, in practice leading up to the game, I don't really have a problem with that. It's just what he decides within the game. Uh, but this game, I don't know, and I do blame him, but I don't know if I blame him for the play calling. I didn't really notice anything wrong with the play calling in this game. You know, nothing crazy like, well, he blew it with this play call. The fourth down, they were converting some fourth downs, you know, kind of barely. Kyler Murray with his legs, and they go from one for one, you know, on their own, what, 35-yard line. You know, it, it's not, it's a low percentage one. Going for that might have lost the game, you know. So that is where Kingsbury takes his hit in this game right there. Um, you, know, you kind of thought he was invincible. Like they're, they're just not going to stop us on fourth down. You kind of barely got it. They're going to catch on here a little bit. You know, it's a good, well coached defense. Um, that was not a good one. Then Jeff Wilson breaks loose. I think got to the half yard line, the one yard line play later. They scored. So they, they scored. Uh, and the Cardinals still had a shot after that. They still had a shot. Um, and it still didn't work out. So if you take that away, if you just punt the ball, who it's all assumptions, who knows what would have happened, but, um, yeah, that that was that was a dagger. Kyler Murray, tens, you know that that interception he had was pretty bad. You know, and he tends he's had a, he's had quite a few of those. You know, this year and especially down the stretch here. So some blame to him uh, there. He kind of just gets crazy with his feet. The footwork is ridiculous, ridiculously bad at times. You almost can tell when he's going to throw the interception. Kind of just threw it up for grabs. You know, and I see people bl- blaming Kingsbury for that. That is in no way Kingsbury's fault. Not even debatable. Um, Kingsbury didn't throw the ball up for grabs. There was another down. Um, you know, he didn't specifically call a one read play, a one option play. That's just not, I don't think you ever see that with the Cardinals offense. You'll see this is the first option, but there, no one's forcing Kyler Murray. This, this is ridiculous. I mean, no one is doing that. So that is on Kyler Murray. So they're equally, equally the, to blame here. Murray still, I think he still has a ways to go with, it, with his, uh, in his passing game. And it's mainly because of his footwork and decision making like that. Very good player. Does a lot with his legs. It's a spread offense. A lot of receivers. He's going to get a lot of production. So that people may look at that, you know, the amount of yards, the amount of times he throws the ball, and almost forget about, you know, the sloppy play there. He is young. It's his second year, so it's okay. You know, it's okay. Uh, but, it, you know, it's okay in terms of his future. But is it okay in a game like this? You know, it's a game that 
You're playing the third-string quarterback, the third-string running back, who they could not stop, by the way. Jeff Wilson was a maniac. Big game for him. Um, their offense line and run, and, you know, their run blocking. Cardinals defense just couldn't couldn't stop him. You know, almost felt like the, the Niners should score more than 20 points based on how well he ran. Uh, you know, a depleted team in general. You just can't lose that game. You can't lose that game. 12 points can't happen. The Niners been blowing game. They haven't been playing good at all either. So it's not like they, you know, they're always sneaky teams. They're so well coached, and they, even their backups are pretty solid, better than most teams. But the Cardinals can't lose this game. You know, uh, there was a crucial call. Dan Arnold had a fumble. And one ref was kind of singling, singling down while the other one was coming up to him and discussing. And then all of a sudden they decided uh, it's it's a fumble, Niners ball. They replayed a million, you know, they show the replay. They review it for for a, quite a while. It's clear to me that Dan Arnold's the whole lower body is just on the ground as they're tr- still trying to strip it. They finally take it out, and they didn't reverse it they kept the same and you know the same old explanation pretty much from the rules expert is that there's just not enough there even though it kind of looks per you know we can make an assumption I I mean I don't I'm not making an assumption I know he was down but uh and that's just BS because the original call on the field wasn't quite clear either uh I thought he was clearly down so that actually the Cardinals got outplayed in this game so that's not why the Niners won the game the Cardinals played pretty sloppy they didn't play well uh, but that was a crucial point in the game, and I thought that was a – that's a confusing call. You know, that's a confu- – there's always calls where it's like, yeah, that's a bad call, but you could understand why the ref thought one thing in full speed, you know, live, whatever. And it's debatable. It's a debatable call, even though I strongly think one thing. But th- a play like this is different. You know, I thought it was pretty clear, and that seems to be a thing in week 16 here. Um with the refs, you know, some confusing calls that you just can't explain. Uh, the Cardinals got to be better and they need some help. They're going to play a Rams team, which Jared Goff might be out. Even if he is in, he's not playing well and he's playing hurt. Cam Akers, will he be in or out? Cardinals back in position. Uh, they need the Bears to lose, but they're playing the Packers, so that's a possibility. The Bears are playing good football, but um, will they choke again? I don't know. We're going to see. Uh, they got to pick it up, though. Can't play. Can't have a game like this. Wild game on Saturday night. The Dolphins and Raiders was a defensive game for the most part, uh, for most of the game. Kind of weird thinking the Raiders were in a defensive game. It's a big reason why I picked the Dolphins because I think their defense would slow them down. Raiders got some pretty big plays. They were able to move the field. They were able to get in the Dolphins' territory for the most part this game pretty easily. And then they would kind of shut down. Derek Carr would throw the ball away. He would take a bad sack. You know, he didn't play a bad game. He threw pretty well. Um, you know, he hit, hit Aglor, he hit Waller, some good balls there. He threw well, but as soon as he got in the Dolphins territory in the red zone, uh, he didn't really play that well there. You know, again, throwing the ball away, uh, sometimes he had to, but some of the sacks he was taking were pretty bad. Um, so they, they, they could have put more points on the board is my, is my point there. They could have put up more points. Uh, but yeah, that's the reason I picked the Dolphins because they would slow them down, not allow, allow them to get really, you know, a lot of points there, get touchdowns. Um, you know, and I thought that pretty much anybody at this point of the year, the way they're playing, could score on the Raiders' defense. But that wasn't the case with the Dolphins. They could not score. Tua just does not seem like the same Alabama Tua. And I know that sounds funny because rookies don't usually – it's the NFL. It's a way bigger step. They don't usually seem like that. But they still seem like the same person, you know. But it doesn't really seem like that for me. I don't know what the situation is. He doesn't – to me, he's not moving right. He's not, you know, letting plays develop. The Dolphins' offensive line played like – they played like how you think they should play at looking at them on paper because we thought they'd be one of the worst offensive lines even though they had a bright future because they have a, a young group um, this year. And they've been playing, you know, they haven't been like a, one of the best and not even really close to that offensive line, but they've been, playing, they've been playing pretty good. And the Raiders are a pretty bad defensive line. Uh, they can't get pressure, one of the lower pe- pressure rates in football. Uh, and they were getting torched the Dolphins, uh, Dolphins offensive line. So the main blame why they couldn't score was actually not Tua, even though I'm not happy with how he played. Um you know, but the offensive line was pretty bad. They were just getting beat in the trenches pretty badly. Um, and sometimes I talk about that going into the year. I talk about it going into the year every year. Some offensive lines would kind of play pretender for part of the year, you know, late in the year. This, the crunch time. This is when the real offensive lines show up, you know, the wear shows up, who's healthy, who's, who, who's um, you know, who's ready for the moment, who's just consistent. 
So maybe that's it. They might be in the playoffs with that offensive line, which offensive line is going to show up. That applies to a lot of teams. A lot of teams kind of showing their true identity. And I say, I say this every year going into the year. The offensive lines do this. It's a thing every year. It's nothing new for a, a handful of teams. So that's something to monitor, I guess. Um, but, yeah, Tua doesn't seem right, um, not giving plays a chance downfield. Sometimes it looks like the play call is just to get the ball out quick, short yards, but they're, they're trying to win. They're trying to go to the playoffs, so that's kind of hard to believe at the same time. I, th- I think that could pop up here and there, but maybe not as much as people think. Um, you know, So Tua just it doesn't seem like the same guy. So then you wonder, two, th- two things I wonder here with Tua Tungabailoa um, – and they they both could play a part together, I guess, or they could it can be one or the other. It could be a neither, and something weirds going on. I don't know, but that is that was a pretty gruesome injury. Uh, may, maybe it's in his head a little bit. You know, a lot of teams probably wouldn't have drafted him because of that injury, but we knew the talent was evident and it was there. So yeah, I didn't have a problem with the pick. Uh, you know, so I'm not saying I did or they shouldn't have taken him because of that injury. But my point is, maybe, maybe the injury's in his head. It was a pretty bad one. Uh, and then looking at it that way, is he going to get out of his own head? Is he going to, you know, um, is it going to fix itself over time, get more comfortable, I guess, or, or is it kind of going to hurt him for the long run? That I'm not saying that's the case. It's something that it's something that's in the back of all of our minds, probably. The other thing is, you know, when Fitzpatrick comes in, the entire offense seems just smooth. The whole thing, everything, just seems compared to Tua. I'm not just the quarterback play. The running backs, the offensive line, the receivers, uh, the tempo, maybe the play coming in and getting called at the line and adjusted. It all looks smoother. And that this this could be a this could be some more of a good thing for Tua because I mean it's bad that it's week sixteen and he's not really getting it together and you know understanding the offense as good as Fitzpatrick. But the good thing is, if that's a problem with more time with another offseason, that will fix itself. So, you know, let's, let's hope that's if it's one of those, that's what it is. It very well could be it. It could be a mixture of those things, and he can get out of that funk. Um, but he doesn't seem right right now. Uh, I'm not really too worried about the long run because I know the talent is there. But it is a little concerning when, when they have to take him out. And then a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick, who is a very un- will probably go down as one of the more underappreciated, underrated quarterbacks of all time. Um, and he can play, but you know, when, when you're going to get benched and this Ryan Fitzpatrick has come in and win the game for you, it's not a good look really, really. Um, but yeah, fast forward to the end of the game. Yeah, Fitzpatrick comes in. He's playing very well. They had a missed opportunity in the first drive with, with the touchdown there. He did had they have a drop, and then he had a missed throw. But other than that, he came in cold, uh, and he threw some really good balls to get them down there, something they couldn't do all night, really. Um, and again, the whole offense just looks smooth, better with him in. Crazy. Um, but... Yeah, so that makes it a game. Uh, the Raiders take the ball to the other end, and then they play for a field goal. This is a stupid decision. It's a very stupid decision. Uh, they had a mixed, mixed extra point at one point as well, and that, you know, it's one point, ends up a tie game. So that was pretty costly. Uh, but, yeah, I think – let me mention that Darren Waller played a great game. Nothing surprised there. Nelson Aguilar is has – been very very good he's played a great game in this one feels like he's getting better every step of the way smooth footwork he, we know he has speed but he's using that speed more that quickness of speed uh catching the ball making some big time catches great after the catch looks like their best wide receiver Darren Waller I guess you could consider that as well uh which is crazy but Aguilar looks great he looks he looks fantastic so I have to mention that um they you know so all of a sudden it's an offensive game it's almost kind of like back and forth um you know, at that point, then the Raiders decide to play for a field goal. They have Josh Jacobs who could score. The Dolphins are actually trying to let them score. They're almost trying to drag him in the end zone, I think, on one play. Um, you know, and, and that, I understand this if you're going to go up by three or more. I don't know if I really understand it then, but maybe okay. Or I definitely understand it if it's as time expires. You're kicking, you're playing to kick the field goal with one second left, three seconds, whatever it is, whatever it is. So this was a very stupid decision, and it always bites the team in the ass, and it did. So then we fast forward to uh, the crazy no look pass play because he's getting mauled, you know, by his face mask. Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, that's a ridiculous throw. It's a ridiculous throw. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how a guy makes a throw when he can't see it when he's getting grabbed in the face mask. There's quarterbacks that under throw it balls when they don't even get hit yet because they feel the pressure that's another level absolutely ridiculous I don't know if he read the coverage or not I don't know if he's just like let me just throw it up because the only chance I got I think he read the coverage and he he understood the coverage in that split second as he was you know about to get his face mask grabbed 
That may it's ridiculous. High IQ Fitzpatrick, ridiculous play. It'll go down as one of the best plays in the year. Uh, why the Raiders are in cover too is just mind blowing. I already went on my rants on on Twitter with it. I did notice after the fact though that Trayvon Mullen stuck with his guy. So Trayvon Mullen makes it look like it's it's uh, it's cover two man under, which you just stick on your guy until the safety has the help, which would make a lot more sense. Damon Arnett plays just zone cover two, stays in the flat. So confusion there, but that's still on the coaches to make that call and not put their corners in the best quite in the best position. Uh, there is no priority to cover the flats there, and in cover two, the safety has to get over and cover fifty percent of the field there, and they had they were short on corner or safety, so. Yeah, Isaiah Johnson, a back of corner at safety, so he had to get over um, and, and you know cover that on the sideline. And it's just you're asking your players too much, and you gave him that free gap. Um, any other coverage, that ball doesn't get complete. It's still a ridiculous throw, whether it gets complete or not, but it doesn't. Uh, and the doll, and you get the 15 yarder on top of it. Obviously, the right call, stupid, you know, bad penalty. Obviously, it wasn't on purpose. That happens. Just a bad time can happen. Uh, and then you know the rest. They get the field goal. So the extra point was costly. The penalty, the coverage call was costly. Uh, playing for a field goal was costly. That'll be the Raiders' season there. So that it, it was a tough stretch for the Raiders. Uh, it was a it was a it was a tough few games there down this down the stretch. That's got to be rough. The Dolphins stay alive. Two will remain the starter. Not sure if I agree with that, but Fitzpatrick, the closer, I think we all can get on board with that. Um, I suppose so. I can't I can't be too mad about it. But Tua's got to got to play a little better there. Um, yeah, crazy game. I think I talked about that one too long because of the Tua situation. But I thought, you know, I, you know, I think it's some good insight there. Hopefully, uh, Falcons Chiefs defensive game. Yeah, a lot of people were hammering the over in this one. I wasn't really uh, agreeing with it, even though I had it pretty close to the over, but I had it just under. Uh, did not think this much. My point is I didn't think it was going to be this defensive game, this much of a defensive game. Uh, the Falcons defense legit, though. I mean, how many quarterbacks have played well against this Falcons defense? I was, like, thinking about it. What quarterbacks have played well against this defense this year? Not too many. Patrick Mahomes, the best in football, didn't play too well. Tom Brady lit him up in the second half. I mean, maybe the best of all time. A Super Bowl winning MVP. I remember Russell Wilson tore him up pretty good earlier in the year. Uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback, MVP type player. Nick Foles did it, <laughs> former Super Bowl MVP. Uh, and that's really about it. You know, the Dak, Dak on the comeback, I suppose. Um, so some good quarterbacks there. Um, you know, the, my point is the defense is legit. This defense is legit. They gave, they gave uh, Mahomes some problems. Uh, teams will take this tape. You know, when they have to play the Chiefs in the playoffs, they will go, Where's the Falcons tape? Give me that Falcons tape. Let's watch that. That's what they're going to do. Um, you know, so that that's something. That's something. Falcons run a lot of cover one, but they did mix in some cover three as well. So maybe that threw off the Chiefs a little bit. Um, good game plan for, for the Falcons. Uh, maybe they might keep this coaching staff, but Matt Ryan has not been playing good. He's He's got to be leading the league and taking bad sacks right now. Yeah, Carson Wentz got benched, so Matt Ryan has taken over for that probably. Uh, holds the ball way too long, has plenty of time. I'm pretty, I am pretty. Mean, I don't know if there was a sack that wasn't his fault. It was bad. It was bad stepping into him, holding the ball too long, stepping into him. You know, so that was bad. And the Powell fumble was a key moment in this game. The Chiefs were pretty fortunate in this game. They made plays in the end. Uh, A.J. Terrell should have picked off Mahomes at the end. That was a great play, though. He dropped it. Probably should catch that. That was a great play. Um, he's been great. He's been great. He's been fantastic. Looks like the best rookie corner. A lot of upside. Uh, he's been shutting down some pretty good receivers, too. The tough challenges. And remember, you know, Jamar Chase really had his way with him. So you see how good these young receivers are coming out, too. So he'll come out this year. It's beside the point, though. Uh, I like the Falcons' defense. Matt Ryan, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of right now. Um, yeah, they didn't do enough offensively. The Chiefs didn't play that well. They still win. So it's kind of another one of those games. They didn't really play their best ball. They still won. So it kind of shows how good they are. But I, I don't know if it's really positive from this game. You won. But uh, teams are going to use this tape. Um, you know, they end up clutching up after the dropped interception, use their speed, get that big play touchdown. Um, you know, Kelsey had a pretty big game defense. The defense had a big game. They showed up when they needed to got after Matt Ryan, I suppose a lot of sacks on him. Uh, yeah, a little, little interesting of a game. It felt like the Falcons are going to win there, but it is the Falcons. You kind of expect them. And then a shot to tie the game. Young way Koo, who has been one of the best kickers in football this year, uh, can't hit it. So that's just a Falcons move right there. So, yeah, Chiefs escaped that one. 
Um, you know, I, you could still consider them the best team in football. You can't take a game like this that they won and say, oh, they're not the best team in football. You know, it's nothing like that. But you know, the, the takeaway is teams will use this tape. Will they be successful? The Chiefs still getting fancy, you know, that when they, th- they threw an interception when it wasn't in Mahomes. They threw the ball to Mahomes. They're getting bored out there. So I don't know. This is not the full go, Chiefs, but there, it is something you can work with, you know, using the Falcons tape, you know, if you're going to play the Chiefs. So, and that doesn't mean you're, they're going to execute that team and they're going to win because they watch the tape. You know, that's not what that means, but it's something. Uh, yeah, the Jets won two in a row. They don't have the first pick anymore, so they're going to go out and play some. You can't run on the Jets, apparently. You can't run the ball on the Jets. The Jets. The Stefanski had a meatball game. The running backs had a meatball game. Uh, Stefanski came out and, you know, you're missing receivers and you're throwing the ball only. There was a certain point where, you, yeah, you had to come back. You had to throw the ball. Baker threw the ball 52 times. You should have had 500 passing yards to throw the ball that many times. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, so not the best game from him. Yes, the receivers aren't out there. That's a legitimate excuse for him. It's a legitimate excuse for the teams, the team. But if you're that good of a team, you find a way against maybe the worst team in football, the second worst team, whatever. Uh, you find a way, you know, you can't have these moments pop up. I, you know, yes, they are better with their full receivers out there with Jedrick Wills out there. Yes, they are better. They probably win this. They might win the game, but if you're that good of a team, you find ways, you don't have these hiccups. You're going to have these bumps in the roads, in the road. You know, if you're playing a playoff team, sure, sure. Uh, but yeah, they didn't come out running the ball like they should have. So that's why Stefanski had kind of a meatball game. Um, you know, run the ball more. I know Nick Chubb really couldn't do much. The Jets defensive line is actually legit. Um, so maybe a bright future with some of those young guys there. Uh, Crowder threw a touchdown. He also had pretty good numbers receiving as well. So he had a pretty good game. Frank Gore uh, pound the football. Defense stepped up. They got the strip sacks on, on Baker. They had some big plays. Uh, so some weird things that, yeah, the Browns could have won the game if, if things went their way. The fumble at the end, which was a weird one, but I, I guess it was the right call in the end. I was kind of questioning at the time, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, it's just they, they, they couldn't run the ball, and they should have ran the ball more. You know, they, they kind of took the run game out of themselves. They took it. It seemed like the Browns, you know, same thing we talk about. We're going to talk about the Titans, you know. They just start off poorly. They take the run game out of themselves. Uh, that's bad. It's it, bad things happen. You can lose to anybody. You can lose to anybody then. So that's kind of what we've been saying about the Browns all year. It happened here. Uh, again, they'll be better with their their full talent, their full, full slate of guys, obviously. Uh, so we'll see what happens. They actually had shots in this game uh, still, even though it was kind of a disaster and they couldn't pull it off. But Jets, bad news is, yeah, they're for sure they were kind of already out of it going into this week. But they're for sure out of Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes, I guess, uh, here. But uh, – Maybe some promise for the future, I suppose. People probably overreacting to that. It's overreaction Monday. People probably, you know, thinking, I don't know. I know he's probably getting too crazy there, so maybe not. Uh, wild game here. Uh, Colts 24, Steelers 28. This is weird. This is, I talked about it during the week. I look at games. I look at games, um, you know, while, so last week, week 15, there's a bunch of games. I'm looking at, I'm looking ahead of time. I always do that. And it kind of picking my head. I'm thinking Steelers because the Colts have been playing great. Uh, they kind of got to get a run game going to open up the passing game. Steelers stopped the run pretty well. They might be a Colts defense. Pe- people look, teams look like they're pushing the ball a little more than they were against Colts defense earlier in the year. So I'm thinking Steelers, Steelers just looked awful. Looked like a terrible team for some reason, you know, especially against the Bengals, but in general, the Colts are playing pretty good football. Yeah, I wasn't too happy with them with the Texans game last week, but so so I switched my pick to the Colts. And I don't really have to think about it too much. I'm just thinking Colts and then and then for some reason I wake up Sunday and I'm like, yeah, the Steelers might win this game, but I'm I'm always afraid to switch my picks. It never goes well. And then the Colts are just whooping their ass. And I'm like, thank God I had switched my pick. And look what happens there. Uh, so I thought that was funny. Uh, but, yeah, the Colts just look really good to start. They're playing good defense. They're, you know, making plays. The offense, they're running the ball. Phillip Rivers is throwing good, you know, good balls down, even downfield. Um, everything looks good. It's getting getting hyped in the Colts. I was really hyped on them after the Raiders game. And I wasn't thrilled with them again with the Texans game, letting them stick around. And, you know, they, they kind of rely on getting a you know wild turnover. they kind of done that at times. Uh, this year, so that's kind of my knock on them a little bit, but they're playing really good football. It's highest so I've ever been on the Colts, especially within this game, and they kind of just blow. The, I mean, they do just they blow it. They blow. They choke this game. Um, f- you know, there, there's conservative play callers that I hate. I hate them, a lot of them, and then there's Frank Reich, 
where your 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 game is running the ball and it's kind of working that opens everything out. It makes Philip Rivers' job easier. And then you kind of just go away from it, you know, and that's questionable. Frank Philip Rivers is equally to blame is is Frank Reich though. Um Philip Rivers offense is Frank Reich offense. Frank Reich offense is a Philip Rivers offense. That's why Philip Rivers is there. They have experience with each other. Frank Reich was the quarterback coach, offense coordinator Philip Rivers for some time. Um, you know, um, so my point in Philip Rivers, a veteran, a guy that could be a Hall of Fame guy, he is able to call plays, change play at the line, adjust from what he sees. Uh, so they're equal. They're equal. You can blame them equally, really. Uh, you know, I guess the play call comes in from Frank Reich, so maybe slightly more blame from Frank Reich there. Obviously, Rivers has some control, but then Rivers is forcing throws into coverage, downfield triple coverage, intercepted ball. Um, so then, then, then Philip Rivers kind of comes up and ties him up. You know, it's the it's the uh, he's making those throws. Frank Reich isn't, so maybe Philip Rivers a little more to blame there. But I'm blaming them both. Um, Steelers got some offense going. So like I said, I like the Colts defense. There's not too many great defenses in the NFL anymore, so they're towards the top. They make plays to win games. You know, sometimes they look locked down. Earlier in the year, they were just straight locked down. They were like, wow. You know, and I've kind of said this, even though I've gotten higher on the Colts because they've been more balanced, the offense has been going, but I've kind of said teams are watching the tape. You know, some teams playing the Colts for the second time. You see the Titans. They're figuring out how to move the ball on this cover two defense. I'm not a big cover two guy, but they're a good cover two defense. You know, they're figuring it out. And it's not really a surprise, even though they're still a good defense. And the Steelers, who have not been able to move the ball on anybody, anybody, they're so specifically one dimensional. I talked about that. They they can hit slant screens and quick outs, quick passes, basically. Uh, they're able to figure it out against Colts. They're breaking some bigger runs. Uh, wasn't really throw Benny Snell for the most part of this game. You know, more James Conner. How about that? Uh, and they're hitting balls downfield. They just have not been able to do that. They just have not been able to do that. And for some reason, they're able to break out against the Colts. So not really, really. I know the offense put him in a bad situation. Frank Reich, Phillip Rivers put him in a bad situation. But it's not a good look for the Colts defense because, you know, what's the identity on this team? That, that's kind of the question. Again, I'm, I'm, I, maybe I'm back where I was on the Colts after this game, but you know, last couple weeks, and mainly the Raiders game after that game, I've been a little higher on the Colts than normal. I still think they're a very solid football team, a playoff football team, even though they could be out. But the problem is, in terms of a playoff team, how far would they go? What's their identity? You know, um, it's good that they have some balance, but now you can move the ball on their defense. You can, you, you can turn them over on offense. You can stop them if you stop the run. Um, if you stop the run, you're probably going to beat them, really. Uh, and then they're inconsistent with their play-calling decision-making there. Um, so I don't know if they really have a true identity. It's a good team that doesn't have a true identity um, here. And they do kind of rely on some crazy turnover, it feels like. You know, look at the te both Texans games, the Packers games. Had some, you know, the Packers just don't turn the ball over. And, you know, they earned them for the most part. It's a good defense, don't get me wrong. But they kind of rely on a lot. They rely on too much to go far in the playoffs um, you know, and you know, as it sits, they're out of the playoffs right now. I think they'll be in. We'll take a look at that. But there's basically, uh, they're a borderline playoff team at the moment. That's just how it is right now. So, um, yeah. So some questions about the Colts or the Steelers? Did they break loose? Did they just give them a boost? Did they get the momentum? Did they figure some things out? Um, you know, I like the play calling in this game. They had, you know, they had. They probably could, you know, done a little more too. You know, Chase Claypool dropped the touchdown. Deontay Johnson dropping the ball early as usual. Uh, I think Juju dropped the touchdown at one point. I know a lot of people talk about the refs in this game, <clears throat> and the refs in this week in general were not good. I don't know if they were good in this game, but I don't. I don't know if there's a flag where it's like, how did they call that? You know, what? Well, that was a. You can't explain that call. That's a shady call. I don't really get any of those from this game. I think what it was. I feel like everything did go the Steelers' way. Everything did go against the Colts, and it kind of was a buildup where it starts to get you kind of annoyed a little bit. But if you look at each of those calls individually or missed calls, I don't know if I really disagree. I guess they're all debatable. So that's where I don't really have a huge problem. It just kind of stinks that maybe everything went against the Colts. Maybe if you're a Colts fan, yeah, that doesn't feel good. doesn't feel good at all. Um, it just wasn't their day though. You know, it just wasn't their day here. It was for a bit, but then it wasn't. So did the Steelers figure something out? Um, did they expose the Colts here? A lot of questions that we just really don't know the answers to You know, we can't automatically assume the Steelers are going to, you know, they could, you can move the ball on the Browns, you know, so we'll see next week. Uh, if they can do that, they won the AFC North. So congrats to them. 
Wild game. Wild game, wild comeback here. The Colts had their chances still. They just did 24-7. They blew it. You know, they couldn't get the ball in the end zone anymore. A lot of things that I explained are to blame for that. Uh, yeah, not much on this game. The Bears are rolling right now. Um, 41 points. You know, I know they played Tanksonville here. I mean, they, they secured it. They put Glennon in. Um, James Robinson, even though he it sounded like he was going to play, he practiced. They held him out. Um, you know, so they, they secured their spot. They get Trevor Lawrence. We'll see what they do against the Colts this week if they – you know, if they put Minshew back in, I think that would be pretty funny uh, and then try to win. Minshew did beat them in week one. Now here we are in week 17. Uh, but, yeah, the Bears executed there. Al Robinson has a revenge game, really good game. He did kind of drop drop a touchdown, probably a ball he should have had, but they had a pretty good game. Um, yeah, I mean, they did their part there. I don't really have a whole bunch of takeaways for this one. They, they did what they needed to do there. Uh, they're scoring. You know, now they got a big game against the Packers. They win. They're in. If they lose, they're huge Rams guys, basically. Um Roquan Smith had a pretty big game there. He, he got two interceptions there that were pretty big. Um, yeah, after one, after the first interception, it was right before halftime, the Jaguars just went like, pre, not only prevent, but put their, they were rushing like three guys and put like their whole team on the goal line and just gave the Bears a free, um, just a free field goal. Like, I don't know if I've seen that one. Uh, so that's, that's tank stuff right there. So that was a wild, wild one. Uh, the Bears just, outplayed them either you know whether they're taking or not the Bears are just much better and they outplayed them plain and simple um big game against the Packers big game against the Packers this week uh maybe it wasn't that long ago since they played the Packers a little bit of not not the best game from them but it feels like they might be better um than they were that game but they have you know they haven't played the Packers within that span so we'll, we'll see that should be an interesting game um looking forward to it uh Giants and Ravens it's a good game for the Ravens. You know, it's kind of on the score line where I predict. I think I predicted 24-16. So, yeah, three-point difference for, if I'm right, if the three-point difference for both teams. Um, I like the way the Ravens played in this one, though. You know, I think they could have probably put more points on the board. Lamar Jackson running all over them. Um, you know, they're clicking. The offense feels back, as we kind of thought would happen. It feels back. Uh, this team needs to be in the playoffs because this offense, you feel, it feels pretty damn good. feels like one of the best football right now. So I kind of, you know, I'm not a Ravens fan. I just want what's, I want what I want. I want what's right. I want, um, I want, you know, a playoff team in the playoffs. So I'm kind of rooting for the Ravens to get in the playoffs here just for that reason. You know, um, that's kind of how I operate. You know, I don't, a lot of these games, I don't go in rooting for a certain team. Um, you know, I kind of just, who's, who does, who's deserving, um, who's out playing our team within that game, you know, um, he's just more deserving, you know, so that's kind of how I operate. Um, people probably figured that out already. Um, you know, I don't really play favorites going into games. That's besides the point though. I'm getting off topic, but the Ravens look good. They look like they're back offensively. Uh, they're, you know, they, yeah, the offense is a strong po point of the, uh, of the team. The defense in their part though, getting pressure, creating plays here. Giants just don't have enough offensively. Daniel Jones can't get things going. They got a big game this week. Uh, the Ravens got to clinch their spot here. Uh, yeah, I don't have too many takeaways from this one. I think the Ravens probably could have scored more points this this game, you know. So that's it's pretty good. The Giants have a good defense, and they worked them right off. They worked them right from the get go, right off the bat. They worked them downfield. It's just a problem for a good defense, kind of a lockdown defense that will slow down good teams. It's just a problem. And again, I think they could have scored more. They held the Giants to thirteen. That's a big time game for the, for the Ravens. It could have been, you know. I, again, I picked it to result in something like this, but I kind of thought it could have been a trap game for the Ravens. Uh, and it didn't end up being that. So it's a big win for them uh, heading in the, in the playoff time. Bengals are, Bengals are hot. They're looking good. Uh, they beat the Steelers last week. They beat the Texans. I, you got to applaud the staff, the staff, Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor in the, in the staff of the Bengals. There was some talk during the year. Should he be fired? This, that. I didn't really make much of it. I thought he'd be back. Uh, he's definitely going to be back. You know, he, he's promised for the future. There's some really good game plans. You, know, you can see they're watching tape. I think they took a lot from the Bears game. The Texans got dominated by the Bears. Um, you know, the Bears were able to move the ball very successfully on them. I think they had a lot of similar play calls there, some misdirection play action. Uh, and they, they saw something there. They, they were able to throw because of, out of that. And that's why they put Brandon Allen in. You kind of question that because Finley ran pretty well. He looked pretty good against the Steelers. But it's a right call. They're right. Uh, very good game plan. Just a very good game plan in general. Very good play calling. They got P. Ryan going. Um, you know, Texans run defense is, is very bad. It's the worst in football. It's historically bad, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe that's an overreaction. Um, so, yeah, you see why a lot of these, some of these questionable teams have been running all over them. And that's, just, that's kind of why, but, you know, I got to credit them. Uh, Texans just couldn't keep up. Defense is that bad. Uh, Deshaun Watson did have a minor injury. I think he might play next week. Laramie Tunsil got hurt 
I don't have too many takeaways from this one. The Bengals, promising future because they have Joe Burrow. They have a lot of young studs. The coaching staff looks good. They're able to game plan and call plays correctly, uh, build the offensive line, get another pass rusher. You got a sneaky, good, fuck, freak, freaking sneaky team there. I stopped myself. Um, you know, so yeah, if they do it, if they don't half ass the offseason, they're going to they're be sneaky good. Is my point. Texans got a lot of work to do. That defense is brutal, but the season was over anyways. Moving on to the next one. Uh, Broncos, Chargers, Judy can't catch the ball. That's my takeaway from this one. What do you have? Five drops. Some crucial ones, too. Some crucial ones. So that isn't good. Um, a, lot, a lot less scoring than I thought it would be. The Chargers are pulling off these close games, so that's wild. I thought there would be a shootout, really, so it's kind of odd, you know, they're like on the same page. This team can only score this many points if the other team scores that many points. Weird stuff. Um, yeah, you know, these teams like you know, it's hard to trust these teams going forward for reasons like that. You know, they got to be with the other team. You know, uh, I don't know. It, you know, I know the Broncos will be healthier next year. The the Chargers will be better kind of by default because young guys getting better. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Not the most entertaining game. Herbert made plays when he needed to. Mike Williams comes away with the interception at the end. I don't like I don't like putting receivers in when it's not their position, but uh, I still don't like it. But you see, you end up with the interception. He's a good high pointer, contested catcher. Uh, even though he did drop a touchdown, that was a wild throw by Herbert. It, it had to be. It was kind of diving. So it wasn't the easiest catch, but it had that's where the ball had to be. It was a, it was a great throw. I think he was kind of going the opposite way too. Uh, so he probably should catch that. Um, I don't have to. Not a game I had full focus on. Not a lot in the line this game. Uh, yeah, we're moving on. Uh, Panthers, Washington football team, Washington football team could have won this game and they clinched the, the, the playoffs, their division, the NFC East. They couldn't pull it off. Dwayne Haskins, who was actually right when I went to go record this was waived. He's bad. He's bad. I mean, we kind of knew that, but it's, we could definitely lock it in, confirm it done pretty bad. Um, if they took him out earlier, uh, I think they're going to put Montez or Montez sweat, Steven Montez sweat in. Um, you know, because he has more of that big playability down the field. Uh, they put Heineke in, which he can use his legs a bit. Uh, but yeah, and they, they just took Haskins out. It's crazy to think about. He took the Ohio State first round quarterback out for a Old Dominion uh, quarterback or Colorado undrafted quarterback, whatever it may be, might have won the game. Pretty, pretty wild. Um, this game felt like it was kind of lost early, though. It was, I, I question the officiating big time in this game. There's some things that just make you scratch your head. There's a lot of you know, pass interference. Sims dropped the ball late. It was just clear pass interference. But with those, I guess I guess the ref didn't see it. So it's not like it's a sh- that shady of a call, sketchy of a call, but it was pretty bad. There was a lot of those calls. But then the, the fumble the Panthers had earlier in the game, which Washington clearly picked up and returned for six, just a sketchy call. Because it was not only because it was a clear fumble recovery touchdown, but you know mainly a clear fumble. Um, he fumbled it, and then they picked it up, and then they just stopped the play. You know they kind of go in and no, we got to stop the play, stop the play. Like, and they and they and the reason was forward progress. If that is really it, the fumble would never have occurred. Forward progress, the whistle's blown, the play is stopped, the fumble never could happen. First of all, it wasn't forward progress. He was still going forward. I think one guy, maybe two had him wrapped up at that point. Ball just came out, you know. Um, but it's sketchy because there's really no explanation. There's no explanation because if it's forward progress, the fumble doesn't happen, they run in and stop the play, but you decide it was forward progress way after the fact. Uh, that forward progress thing just came up this year. Something new, it's something new every year. That could have changed the game quite a bit. Washington just didn't play good enough, mainly from the offensive side. You know, uh, quarterback position. Uh, you know, they muffed a punt that actually went for six, uh, so that was costly. But I, I question that call. It's one that I can't explain. Like pass interference ones. You know, maybe it's so fast. Refs saw the, you know, this and that. So even if you strongly don't like them, you know, you can. I guess you can come up with something that could explain it. Flag like or uh, call like that. With that fumble, I I can't. There's a lot of those with this week. I just can't explain their thinking, what was going through their head. I can't explain it. When you can't explain it, it gets pretty sketchy. You know, it gets pretty sketchy. Every every game, every week, every year, there's bad calls or debatable calls. You can hate them, but um, and that happened all year. But this week had a lot of calls. I just can't explain, and for that reason, they're sketchy. So uh, interesting stuff. Panthers pull it off. Uh, not you know. 
that big of a game for them. You know, maybe you'd rather have a better draft pick. I don't know. Washington's got to fight for their spot next week. Um, you know, when, when, a, when a call like that is so sketchy and you look at another game and another game that is related in the NFC East also has some really bad officiating calls, sketchy calls, you start to wonder a little bit. I don't want to say anything, but you start you start to wonder. Um, the Cowboys played a really good game in this game. The Eagles came out playing very well, um, so I don't want to take any credit away at all from the Cowboys. They dominated this game, 37 points, a big win. Uh, good comeback, too, because it felt like the Eagles were going to get going early. Jalen Hurts is playing good. Cowboys are playing much better. Defense is getting a lot of pressure. They're making plays. You know, their defensive ends, they're there. everyone's making plays. Offense is clicking a little more. You know, if you know again, if Dak didn't get hurt, this team would have dominated the NFC East. Um, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I was not agreeing with a lot of calls down the stretch, but then the big one was – uh, when Hertz was a down on both of his knees holding the ball and they called a fumble and it stood, it's just there's just no explanation. There's no well, maybe the refs looked at it again and just thought he lost the ball when knees were on the ground. There's just none of that because it's just clear as day. So it's pretty interesting. The Eagles still had to dig themselves out of a hole, but they could have scored and made it a one possession game, uh, one score game there. Um, so that was pretty interesting. I wasn't, you know, a fan of a lot of the calls within this game. And while the a, call, a lot of calls are going, sketchy ones are going against Washington at the same time, it makes you wonder a little bit. But the Cowboys at the end of the day did outplay them. Not the best game from Hurts. He looked really good early, but not the best game down the stretch uh, for him. They kind of took themselves out of the game to, so they couldn't run the ball anymore. I thought that would have been pretty effective, especially against the Cowboys. Um, so, yeah, interesting game. Uh, then you got the Rams and the Seahawks, kind of a wild game. Um, you got to credit the Seahawks defense. They've been really turning around. They've been playing really good football. Uh, you know, the main reason they won this game is because their defense. Uh, big game for them, making some big time plays, getting pressure. Uh, yeah, all that. They're play- they're locked down in the red zone. Um, but tough loss for the Rams, especially given what happened in this game. You know, they were able to move the ball pretty pretty easily into midfield. Or in the Seahawks territory, they they were pretty much at midfield and beyond, um, all game, all game, and they scored nine points and they lost the game. The Seahawks offense really put together like two drives, three drives maybe in the total game, and they won the game. So looking at it that way, you know the Rams, you know the way it ended, it looks like yeah the Seahawks just took care of business, they won the game, and they did. They dominated with their defense when when it mattered, they scored when it mattered. But looking at the way the Rams moved the ball compared to the way the Seahawks moved the ball. The Rams probably should have won this game. Uh, you know, they they outgained them for a majority of this game. You know, that being said, you know that you know being what happened, you probably should win the game. So it's pretty pathetic on the Rams' part. Once they got into the into the Seahawks territory, I didn't agree with a lot of play calling. There was a lot of drop balls. Jared Goff, Jared Goff threw a terrible interception at one point. That was earlier first half still. That was a big turning point in the game. If they could have got points on the board there, it could have been a different game. Uh, later on, they got down to the one-yard line, couldn't get an end credit to the Seahawks defense, but um, golf fumbles instead of getting into the end zone. They probably should have done it again You know, on fourth down. He probably should have just reached over. It would have been easy, and if he just snuck it through, he probably would have been in. Uh, but if you run the ball, I don't know if I really agree with it, but okay. But then if you run an outside zone run, I'm questioning Sean McVay very much on that. Um, Seahawks made the play, but it's you shouldn't make the play on that one. A linebacker is going to be in the backfield. Jordan Brooks, athletic guy, getting around, going to be in the backfield on that. You know, uh, relying on a tight end to block in that, which it's not really his fault. Um, bad call, bad call. Um, so yeah, the Rams kind of choked this, choked this one in a way. They weren't like winning where they choked it away, but you had the opportunity to to win this game. Even though it doesn't look like it based on the score, but if you watch the game, you don't understand what I'm saying. They outgained them. They were, they, you know, they were all, they were down there all day, all game, and you kind of just blew it. And the Seahawks put together enough drives. They they played very well on defense to win the game. Uh, the last drive was great. You know, when you needed it, uh, really good play call, play design to get Hollister in the end zone for a touchdown, um, and, and that and that did it there. Jared Goff, uh, I apparently apparently was playing hurt. He broke his thumb at some point. Why keep him in though? So I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if that's a legitimate excuse, but you know, I mean, if he was hurt, he was hurt. But yeah, Seahawks defense is heating up. The question with the Seahawks are um, kind of like the Colts. I was talking about what's what's their identity? Really good team could contend. They got Russell Wilson. What's their identity though? Their defense is much much improved. I don't care who they played. They're much improved. But will they be this good against the Packers? Against the Bucks? The Saints offense starting to heat up against the Saints. You know, will the defense lock those teams down? 
They won't, and that's okay. They won't. Their offense doesn't feel as good as it was early in the year. The offense could be slowed. Um, so what identity will show up in those big games? It's not doubt but it's, it's, it's at all, but it's a, it's, a, it's a question that all of us are thinking. If you're not thinking of it, you're not thinking of it, you know? Um, so what's our identity in those games? It's definitely a contending team, but, you know, offense, defense, can we get on the same page? Can we get the full offense? Can we get the full defense in, in, those, in those games against, like, you know, the Packers, for an example? Um, so some questions there, some questions. That's a big statement win. It's a big win for their defense. Uh, yeah, talk about statement wins. Uh, the Packers got one 40 to 14 against the Titans, the snow bowl of the year in Lambeau. Uh, I talked about it. Uh, I don't remember which video, but I talked about it. Whoever gets the ball first, uh, will probably score to be honest. And that'll be huge. You know, the, the game will kind of go in their favor. And I thought that happened here because the Packers got the chance to start in the 40 yard line. They scored 40 points to start in a 40 yard line to start the game. And of course they were going to score. We all knew they were going to score. If you didn't think they were going to score, you 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 weren't thinking. You know they were going to score. So at that point on, um, it really shifted the game right there. And it might sound crazy because they won forty to fourteen, but I thought that one possession really changed the game big time. You know, I wish the Titans, you know, I think they won the toss. You know, I wish they would have taken the ball for their case because then you kind of the Titans can't. The Titans are a team that can come back, and it actually did feel like they were going to come back at one point. Um, uh, let me let me check something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought the score was wrong for some reason. I thought they scored like 15 points, but uh, yeah, 40 to 14. But uh, the Titans can come back, and the team that can come back is they have a really good offense. Uh, but there's a team that just can't dig themselves in a hole like that because the running game needs to be established. It needs to still be there. And if you dig yourself in a hole, you can't really use Derrick Henry for the most part there at all, or re really. So that's kind of what happened here. They let the Packers start with the ball. They went down and score. The Titans uh, pushed the ball. And they got stopped. That was a huge stop for the Packers. That was a huge moment. Uh, and then they stopped the Packers three and out. And Rashad Evans got a stupid penalty. It was late. It was really late. And nobody likes late penalties, but it was the right call. It was just the Packers didn't really earn it, you know. Um, so Rashad Evans being stupid gave the Packers a, a score on the on that drive. And then the game's kind of getting out of hand. Tannehill not playing the best ball, um, you know. And then you had. And then you had more of those penalties that I just can't explain that end up being kind of sketchy. But the, either way, the Packers just dominated this game. They outplayed they outplayed the Titans, so they didn't win because of the refs. I don't think any, anybody's thinking that. I don't think anybody's going to think I'm saying that, but you got to make sure here. You never know. But, uh, yeah, that offsides penalty on the field goal was I, – I just I can't explain it because uh, it's really lined up in the neutral zone, first off. First off, it was the guy they called it on was the furthest guy from the neutral zone. Uh, and maybe they got the wrong, you could say maybe they got the wrong number, the wrong guy, but no, nobody was even close. The rules expert who usually agrees with the refs even said so. There was nobody even close. Uh, but that's that's not even the, the big problem on uh, why it makes it interesting. Problem is, it's lined up in the neutral zone. You see that before the snap. If he gets back, you don't throw the flag. That's why you don't throw the flag yet. If he gets back, he's okay. But if he doesn't, you throw that flag the second the ball snapped. Not thrown, not thrown, not thrown. Block, return, return really far, then it's thrown. That that stuff, it, 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 you know, I can't explain it. Nobody can explain it. So stuff like that is it's interesting. The Titans would have been in prime position there, um, probably to score instantly. Uh, they end up scoring. They're kind of getting back in the game. Uh, and then, yeah, very good call on the read option with Tannehill because the Packers, sometimes they get confused by a little misdirection, you know, when they have to read plays. Um, you know, so that's a really good call. Tannehill escapes. The Titans are back in the game. At this point, I'm actually thinking they're going to come back, maybe not win, but it's going to end up being a back-and-forth game, I'm actually thinking. And then Aaron Jones, really good run, by the way, breaks a run, gets down there. Uh, live, I'm like, he, I think he stepped out, still a good run. And then the Packers, smart of them, get on the ball, run it. I don't know if it was in, it was fast to get on the ball. It was like, it was, yeah, you have to get all the way down the field. So it's as fast as you possibly could be. So good for them. But it's not like it was instant where nobody could react. The league, the refs, because remember the league, uh, they're, they're watching. They're, they're able to buzz in, you know, stop the game. Um I mean, you know, it's tough for Vrabel to challenge that, but a lot of people have time to figure this out. Uh, and then keep in mind, the ref was standing right there. So instead of being the 43-yard line, the Packers start with the ball in the 7-yard line. It's more free points for them, and the game got out of hand. So there's a lot of things. If the Titans, um, you know, didn't let the Packers, a team that you couldn't let start with the ball, especially at the 40-yard line, 
uh, the block kick, that. A lot of things that really should have made this game closer. At the end of the day, the Packers outplayed them. They dominated them. They were getting pressure on Ryan Tannehill, too. Credit to them. Uh, Darnell Savage has been getting better and better. He's attacking the ball very well. Jared Alexander, this is probably his best game in a year. People will probably disagree, but just for me, just watching him, uh, given the circumstances, too, Corey Davis is really heating up, uh, playing very well. Uh, it's in the snow. Jai Alexander, I mean, the footwork is what stands out. You know, it's so hard to have great footwork in that. And then Corey Davis is a guy who has great footwork, you know, so I thought that stood out. He was locked down there. Um, Titans aren't as good as in the snow as I thought they would be. Uh, this is where the Packers get, you know, some home field advantages because uh, the Packers trusted themselves on their field in the snow. They didn't slip once. They were going full go, full speed, cutting like crazy. The Titans were tiptoeing around, not going full speed, not you know, not cutting at all because they thought they would slip. And that'd be my first thing too. My first thought too. If I'm out there, uh, I'm gonna you know, but I'm gonna test it and I'm gonna try to push myself, you know. Uh, and eventually, I'm gonna go full speed if I think I can go full speed and try to cut if that's my game, you know. Um, they just didn't want to do that for some reason. They didn't trust themselves on, you know, somebody else's field here. The Packers trust themselves fully. They were cutting. They were, they, again, the corners were breaking on the ball. DBs were breaking on the ball. You know, that that was a big difference um, there. Tannehill didn't play good in the snow. Wish they would have ran a little more read option, but they, they, they were down by so much, and they couldn't really run the clock anymore. So, uh, yeah. Interesting interesting game. Big statement win for the Packers at the top of the NFC right now. Some NFC teams are heating up. That's kind of my takeaway. Uh, I think the AFC's – I still think the AFC's stronger than the NFC, but the NFC teams, you know, the Packers are streaking right now. Um, I think they're getting better defensively. Yeah, they're more playmakers. They're getting more pressure on the quarterbacks. They're stopping to run a little better than they, you know, have in the past against good running backs. Uh, misdirection will fool them, though. Offensively, they're consistent. They're rolling. They're making big-time plays. Devontae Adams is impossible to stop. He had a ridiculous game, by the way. I don't think I need to mention that. A.J. Dillon played extremely well. He had a big-time game, was breaking tackles. He kind of played how you thought Derrick Henry would play. I know it's, it's not really Derrick Henry's fault. The Titans kind of took themselves out of the game there, so they couldn't really run the ball as much. But, um, but yeah, back to it. The Packers, top of the NFC, they're rolling. All the things I mentioned, the Saints are getting some offense going with Drew Brees back in there at the right time. They're heating up. The Buccaneers are really heating up, uh, playing good on both sides of the ball. Offense looks like uh, a Tom Brady-led offense for the for playoff time. It looks like that. They're gaining momentum. Uh, the Seahawks are playing really good defense. So these contenders in the NFC are making the NFC better right now. It's going to it's gonna make for a fun playoff. So, uh, yeah, excited about that. I'm getting We're getting a taste of playoff football. I hope the officiating across the NFL is a little better. I hope they don't decide games the way or, you know, I want the teams, the players to decide games. So I wasn't happy with the officiating, but, you know, in one example would be a game like this. It wasn't good, but the Packers still definitely did decide that uh, they won the game here, obviously. So uh, I'm just saying I just want it to be in general, you know, across the league. Uh, let's let the right teams do it. You know, let's, let's let the players play here. Um, week 17, a lot of playoff uh, playoffs on the line, I suppose. You know, big games. Can't wait to see that. Can't wait for playoffs. All of our full coverage. Hopefully, you join us for all that. It'd be much appreciated if you can like the but like like the button. Yeah, I guess like the like button. Uh, subscribe. Turn notifications on. That's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.